Raw.com. I'm so happy to talk about Raw. Move on from this. This Raw was not very good, though. No. What can you do? Three hours long. Now, I will say that uh, they are, you know, it's funny is they're doing, they're doing everything right with the bloodline. It's the second hottest program in the company behind the bloodline. And uh, every week, it's something new. Every week, the people tune in. Every week, the people are into it. And this time, Rhea, Dom, and Priest come out. And man, Priest is still upset about Finn Balor. This guy just needs to get on the same page with us. So out comes J.D. McDonough, who is friends with Finn, who Priest hates. And J.D. says, I'm here to send you, I'm here to give you a message from Finn. And that's, don't worry about me and Finn, just worry about Cody tonight. And now Rhea's angry. She says, we don't take orders from anyone, especially people that aren't part of the Judgment Day. And uh, Dom actually had a, an excellent line when he goes, I am the North American champion. And you know what? I just found out that Canada is part of North America. So I guess I'm in charge of this dump as well. And Rhea says, JD, you go tell Finn we need to talk. And so Sami Zayn comes out who has been cleared. His elbow is still messed up, but it's not nearly as disgusting as last week. And they have Sami Zayn and J.D. McDonough, and uh, they had a good match. And uh, Sami ends up getting his feet up on a moonsault. He drop kicks Finn outside, hits the kick in the corner, gets the pin. They go after Sami afterwards. He bails. It's a good opener. I think that was pretty much it. Kind of downhill from there. They had the stupidest segment where Adam Pierce meets with Chelsea... And he's going to strip her of the titles because Sonya had surgery on a torn ACL. She's not going to be back forever for a long time. Chelsea does not want to be stripped. She worked too hard for this. And so they're going back and forth. She's going to go to human resources. And Pierce finally says, bro, what do you want me to do? Like, what do you want me to do? Your partner's gone for months. And she says, I want to do Chelsea's Got Talent auditions to determine who should be my new partner to defend these titles with. So Caden and Katana come in. They want to talk to Adam Pierce, but they get jumped by Piper Niven. And Piper Niven walks up to Chelsea and she goes, you got a new partner. And Chelsea says, well, you know, I'm thinking of doing auditions. So like, if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you about when we're going to. And Piper grabs the belt. And she goes, no, you don't get it. I'm your new partner. And she walks off. They are now apparently the new tag team champions. I could give all of you 30 seconds to come up with a better idea of what to do with these tag team titles. And none of you will come up with something as stupid as this. Dance off? How about you just say, you're stripped, get a title, we're going to do a four-way, and whoever wins is the champion. Wait, if you're and stripped, somehow, you get a title, get a partner. Somehow, yeah, you're stripped of the title, so get a partner. You're in the four-way because obviously you were the champion. And if you guys win, you, you're you the new, and then they win. And then they're the new champs. Then you don't have this stupid segment that doesn't make any sense. And there's okay, 50 other right. good ideas too, but. <laughs> Cody did a promo. He's ready for Shows you what they Ballard think about tonight. those belts. Yeah. Weren't they doing this renewed push to, like, make women's tag teams and to start that? Well, listen, they were dealt a bad hand because Sonya tore her ACL. But, brother, I know it's fake and you can do anything, but that doesn't mean you have to do something stupid. Do another fake thing to fix the problem. That's not stupid. So then Imperium comes out. And, uh, man, golly, they talked for, like, an hour to set up Gable versus Giovanni Vinci. So they do the match. And uh, and Vinci just beats him and beats him and beats him and beats him and beats him. Come back. Nope. Beats him again. Come. Nope. Beats him again. And then finally, Chaos Theory suplex, he pins a guy. I'm like, dude, first off, you got beat by Gunther two weeks ago. Now they want to do a rematch. And you barely beat Giovanni Vinci, who never beats anybody. And then Gunther says, I challenge that freak Otis. And I got so excited. I thought, my God, Gunther and Otis, a dream match. They had the most nothing happening match ever. And Gunther pinned him with a power bomb. And then Gable sneaks in, gives Gunther one German, and runs for his life. And I thought, you gave that 30 minutes of television time between a long ass promo and two matches. And at the end of the day, I could not possibly care about this match. 
and it's Gunther and Chad Gable. So this sucked. Because the whole thing has been played for yucks and laughs. Imagine with the talent level of those guys. Even That wasn't even the problem here. The problem was Shorty G can't even beat the other Shorty G, Baldy G. And then I know Gunther beats what? I know. I know. To, to their credit, and I can't even believe I'm saying this. To their credit, clearly whatever changed where they decided to do Gunther versus Chad Gable for the title... I mean, maybe they just watched the match they had and were like, golly, that was a great match. Let's do it again. They are totally ignoring that Gunther did beat him. They yes. bring up beat the clock, but they're totally ignoring the other thing happened. They're hoping you forget. And they had to throw Maxine into this instead of just having an offshoot feud between Otis and Gable and Giovanni Vinci and Kaiser. Instead, we have Vinci being a loser again. We have Kaiser hitting on Maxine, and Otis doesn't like that, and it's like... Again, there were better ways, in my opinion, to do this one. We had uh, Priest and Finn having an argument, and then Drew's back, and he's asked what's next. And before he can answer, Riddle walks up. And essentially, Riddle has volunteered them as a new team against the Viking Raiders. And the whole story of this is Drew is selling it like, I can't wait to kill this guy. And so you're watching it, and literally the way they did the match, it's like Drew never got in for a long time. And it was all Riddle, all Riddle, all Riddle. And then finally, Riddle goes for the tag. And I'm sure everybody watching, including me, was like, you're about to get it, brother. And he does the tag. And Drew gets in and starts beating these dudes up. And they win. And then later, they do another segment where the New Day confronts them. And Riddle volunteers them for another match. And Drew's like, ah. So one of two things is happening. Either... Drew's turning on this guy at some point soon and going heel. And there would be a lot of opponents for him as a heel. Or they are doing like what they did after uh, Daniel Bryan left, where every babyface has to get the Daniel Bryan, the push that got him over, that was supposed to bury him, but it actually got him over. So now they do the same thing with everybody else, saying that'll get everybody else over. It's possible that they're recreating RKO here, Rated Drew's RKO. Drew's the new Randy. Yeah, because when Rated RKO began... It was actually exactly like Sammy and the Bloodline. It was, okay, you know, we're going to put them together for three weeks, and then Randy's going to RKO this guy, and they're going to feud. But the fans loved it, and so they went with it. And now I think they might be recreating that, where they're making you think Drew wants nothing to do with this nerd. He's just going to kill him at his first opportunity. But Riddle starts to grow on him. And next thing you know, they're the World Tag Team Champions. So it's one or the other. And I guess we're going to find out which one it is. And if they if they actually do that, that would actually be a great setup for Ready to Return and actually RKO Riddle, which is coming at some point. I'm hey, sure. you may be able to jumpstart the Street Profits, too, depending on what direction you're going with them, if they're going to be baby faces or heels. Although I have a feeling, much like Bobby Lashley, people are not going to want to boo Montez Ford and, and, and Dawkins, but we'll see. We had uh, Rhea and Indy. Rhea just killed her. And then Candice attacked Rhea. And they double teamed her and ran. So uh, maybe Candice can book an overseas tour next week. Because otherwise, she's in trouble. Then we had a Shinsuke Nakamura interview with Seth. And I've ever told you how much I hate this Seth Rollins character. Mm. Not Colby. He's, I'm sure he's a fine fella. But this Seth Rollins character sucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shinsuke comes out. And he's asked, you know, why'd you do what you did? And he does a long promo in Japanese and then says, I want the world title. Cole says, well, did you have to really kick him in the head? And Nakamura cuts another long promo in Japanese and just says, I'm going to win the world title. So then Seth's music hits. You know, Seth was screwed last week. He was attacked. He was violently jumped. And he comes out dancing. Mm. And he's dancing. And he's singing. And he's so happy. Oh my God, help me. He gets in the ring, and then he didn't care at all. He's like, hey, you know, you want a shot? Let's do it. And so they shake hands because they're going to have a match. And then Nakamura gets in close, and he whispers something. You don't know what he said, but Seth is gotten to, and he's very, very concerned. So we do not know what Shinsuke whispered to Seth Rollins, but it's got him nervous. 
What do you think he said? Then he jumped in with a Kinshasa. He goes, I'm going to shoot on you, brother. That's what he said. (laughs) And Seth is like, golly, shoot. Better go train. (laughs) Becky and Trish. You know, I hope hope all of you that were crying that this wasn't on SummerSlam. If they would have done this match and this finish on SummerSlam. God. I don't want to say it would have sunk the entire show. But God. I don't think they would have did it. After all that. <laughs> and this, by the way, started in like March. Because it was in March that Dave said they're headlining, or they're going to be a, a big match at SummerSlam. And I was like, there's no way this is lasting to SummerSlam. Well, it lasted past SummerSlam. And after all that, they do a match. Trish is in her face mask. She can't even see anything. She's bonking into stuff. And then after 10 minutes, she just takes it off because she's healed. It's like, why didn't you do that earlier so you could at least have a good match? And then they got counted out. Well. (laughs) Save it for the pay-per-view. It's called payback. Wouldn't that make more sense anyway? Counted out of the ring. You had to have an ending. And then they announced it'll do a cage match next. Of course. Because nobody escapes a cage. Ever. Nobody in, gets involved in a cage match. No, no. Gunther yelled at Imperium. And then what saved the show for me was Cody Rhodes and Finn Balor. So they had a good match. I mean, the match is good. That was all fine. You know, good match. But, man, the finish of this was so great because they're doing the uh, the evil match. The House of Tortures out there, Dirty Dom. Randy Rhea, whatever you want to call her. <laughs> who, who's who? And they're all, they got this gimmick, they got that gimmick. Cody's having to overcome this, he's having to overcome that. And then finally, Dom slides a chair to the ring and the ref grabs it. And he goes to get rid of the ring. And then Finn Balor is, um, what's that called in football where you're going to go like this? A s- snapping the football yeah. hike? What is that? A hike. Okay. A hike. Yes. A hike. Okay. So Not Finn well. Balor's in the middle of the ring. And Cody is, is like, he's laid out behind him. And Finn gets in hike position, and he's like, slide me that briefcase, Priest! So Priest gets the briefcase, and he slides it. And because, you know, Finn's like in a half squat, the briefcase just slides right underneath him, and it slides right into Cody's hand. Excellent. And Finn Balor, he doesn't even follow it. He just keeps looking at Priest. It's like a cartoon. Like he knows it went too far. And he knows Cody's got it. And he's like, Gah. And and Priest, who who threw it, he sees it go underneath. And all of his face just goes. He's so disgusted that this idiot missed this slide. And of course, Cody gets it. He clonks Finn Balor. He pins him. I watched this finish like 50 times. I have to wait for Dave to be ready. You know, I'm like, Dave, you ready to go? He goes, yeah, give me give me two minutes to set up. And then like 30 minutes later, he's ready to go. So I just kept watching this over and over, howling. They were so great. Professional and so, grown men. Great yeah, job. Cody got the pin, and then they <laughs> beat them all up afterwards. And Sammy came down, and he got beat up, and they laid everybody out. Then the show went off the air, and you can find it on Twitter. You should see the the off-air promo that Sami Zayn cut to the fans after the show. Something else. And then Anthony Bowens starts talking about Mr. Ass. <laughs> He's in tears, talking about Mr. Ass. One more time, he says, from your couch at home, scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they used to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search. <laughs> <laughs> For an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh, really? Well, that's, that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor, wait a second, there's an article on this? Can you can you send me this article? Okay, all right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Now, if you hello, told me, hello, hello. Craig, please. What are we talking about? I don't know, wrestling or something. No, okay. Collision, collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action and <laughs> Teddy Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. 
Sorry. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.